according to the same IMS health data, the emerging markets of China, Brazil, India, South Korea, Mexico, Turkey, and Russia pharmaceutical sales are forecast to grow at a combined pace of 14 to 15 percent. The reason, according to IMS, Unlike the U.S., these countries are benefiting from greater government spending on health care and broader public and private health care funding, which is driving greater access to and demand for innovative medicines. It is no surprise, then, that Merck, a research-based company that last year reinvested nearly 20% of our total revenue back into researching and developing new medicines and vaccines, is trying to increase its presence in emerging markets. Success in these markets will help pay the salaries and fund the continued medical research of the nearly 10,000 Merck scientists toiling to discover the next medical breakthrough, the majority of them right here in the United States. At Merck, we offer many products, medicines and vaccines that are essential to improving the health and welfare and economic viability of developing markets and the world as a whole. Medicines and vaccines needed to treat killer diseases like rotavirus, the leading cause of severe gastroenteritis with vomiting and diarrhea in infants and young children. Global health figures show that rotavirus alone kills 1,600 children under the age of five every day. That's 500,000 a year. According to a recent report by the news agency Reuters, before routine vaccinations began, this condition sent 410,000 children to a doctor every year in the United States alone, with more than 200,000 needing emergency care and 20 to 60 dying. And while we do have a responsibility to our shareholders to make a fair profit on what we produce, we have a proven history of providing access to vital medicines and vaccines around the world to meet unmet medical needs to those who cannot afford them. In 2007 alone, Merck and its foundation worked with dozens of organizations around the world to provide $828 million in cash and donated medicines and vaccines, including our vaccine to treat rotavirus, through our various assistance programs and partnerships worldwide. All of this is at the heart of Merck. Our guiding principles today remain rooted in the, in the words of our modern founder, George W. Merck, who said, now more than 50 years ago, we try to remember that medicine is for the patient. We try never to forget that medicine is for the people. It is not for the profits. The profits will follow. And if we have remembered that, they have never failed to appear. And the better we have remembered it, the larger they have been. That is why I joined Merck. And if you talk to a Merck employee about what drew them to the company or what keeps them at Merck, they will likely recount how a very important person in their life might not be alive or would have a diminished quality of life if not for a Merck product. In recent years, organizations such as Diversity Inc., Working Mother Media, and the Human Rights Campaign have recognized Merck for its exemplary work in the diversity and inclusion space. We have compared favorably not just with other pharmaceutical companies, but across industries as an employer of choice. Also during the past 20 or so years, Merck has undergone more than 50 different federal audits for compliance with affirmative action and equal employment opportunity programs for federal contractors. And each time, we have received a letter of compliance from our government. But perhaps the most compelling and important evidence is standing before you today. All you have to do is look at me to understand that Merck understands the importance of diversity and inclusion. All you have to do is look at the rainbow of men and women who make up our company's very top leadership to recognize that diversity and inclusion are more than mere words at Merck. They are our most important strategic assets. We know that our human and organizational differences, when managed successfully, 
will make us more innovative, agile, and profitable as a company. The culture of inclusion that exists at Merck enables us to build and sustain a workforce and culture in which people are engaged and motivated to produce at the highest level of their individual and team capabilities. We celebrate these important contributions to our business and customers through an annual Global Diversity and Inclusion Award that recognizes significant contributions by individuals and teams across the organization and from around the world. Whether it's in the lab or the marketplace, competitive advantage in a business like ours ultimately rests on innovation. To succeed, we must bring together the most talented and committed people we can with diverse perspectives, people who are willing to challenge each other's thinking and who collectively approach problems from multiple points of view. At Merck, we know that to achieve our goals as a company, we must identify, attract, and retain a diverse workforce that positions Merck as an employer of choice for top talent, talent worldwide, leverages diversity of thought and innovation for success in a competitive marketplace, and truly reflects the demographic makeup of our culturally diverse global customers. If we did not focus on this, how could we successfully operate in 144 company, countries and territories around the world? Or solve difficult problems like developing and distributing vital life-saving medicines and vaccines that must constantly be refrigerated and get them to remote places where good roads and effective storage facilities are non-existent or understand the underlying science and cultural differences of the many populations that depend on our medicines and vaccines. A little over two years ago, I was reading a book by Mary O'Hara Devereaux called Navigating the Badlands. Her writings helped me realize the direction we needed to take to further improve diversity and inclusion as a strategic asset at Merck. In her book, Devereaux talks about the significant change and complexity we are facing globally as a society and outlines four <clears throat> key trends that are impacting the business community in ways never before seen. These include, first, the growth of activist consumers, people who feel empowered by information to control their lives. The more important a decision, the more sophisticated and diverse uh, the information these consumers seek. Well, what could be more important than a healthcare decision? Second, the changing role of women. This is a profound social trend occurring as fewer women choose to marry and more are focusing on higher education. Women are making more purchasing decisions than ever, especially with regards to health care, not only for themselves, but for their families and their social networks. The third, new lifestyles for older people. People who understand that in order to obtain the best health, they cannot just depend on the medical care system. These tween years, as she, as she calls them, ages 55 to 70, are exper experimenting with health care and looking for the very best value proposition. And finally, increasing social consciousness about sustainable growth. This will require organizations who want to sell to consumers to be transparent about their mistakes and willing to share their best practices. This trend is significantly impacting investment, employment, and purchasing decisions across all demographics globally. <laughs> to address these changes, Devereaux concludes, the future organization is a web that must weave itself. They must have multiple networks of individuals who will morph their relationships to respond to the constant flow of opportunities and threats by, that are created by these trends.